Welcome to the Friday Power Lunch, a weekly show amplifying the voices of the Virginia grassroots. Each week, we provide engaging conversations about politics, culture, and women making change. Produced by the unstoppable women of Network Nova, our motto is, when we vote, we win. The Friday Power Lunch is recorded before a live Zoom audience. Follow us on social media, subscribe to our YouTube channel, and show us some love and become a sponsor through Patreon. The Friday Power Lunch, badass women getting things done. From Network Nova Live, it's May 17th, 2024, and you, my friends, are on the Friday Power Lunch. I'm Catherine White, bring your host, bringing you the guests, the issues, the action, fueling the grassroots from coast to coast across Virginia, because we like to get things done, and surely, 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 we make politics fun. And if you're listening out in Spotify land and Apple land, welcome also on our podcast. So that is pretty exciting. And today's theme is really important as we just get geared up for the presidential election that we have, we are on the move for Biden-Harris. We have a lot of the grassroots partners here, and we have the Virginia State team here to talk about the election um, and how we're going to coordinate. We're very excited. So I want to say a, a, a welcome to Betsy, Betsy Feiback. Feiback. Feiback, sorry. Thank you, Betsy. Um, and, and she, you're the founding member of the state and leadership Women for Biden, a grassroots coalition team. Welcome, Betsy. Tanya James, mm -hmm. a friend, a long-term friend to this, this group of Net Network Nova because she herself is a grassroots person, but now she's been appointed for the Biden-Harris lead. She's the Virginia Political and Coalitions Director. Welcome, welcome, Tanya. And also Tai Mallory, welcome to the Friday Power Lunch. And it's great to be in community with Tai. She is the Senior Advisor of Virginia Biden-Harris Campaign. And lastly, Joel Rubin, I love that we're going to have Joel on today. He's a Virginia Beach political consultant, giving us some advice about the grassroots, how we can see ourselves as kind of candidates for and surrogates for what we do in the grassroots as we move around and talk to, you know, our neighbors and friends and how we interact. So we really look forward to learning from Joel um, some strategies, some advice he may have for us. So let's do some show business real quick. So the rules of the road. Yeah, use the chat, say hi, talk and all that kind of stuff, introduce yourself. But if you get nasty, we'll just, we like to toss you out. That's what we do. And then we have our favorite time, which is the after chat at one o'clock where we just have, we turn out down the lights and we get to talk. And if our guests stick around, we get to talk to them and we get to share. And this is where we really, really, really build community. And I'm going to say to you, this is where the action is in the after chat. Everybody in this room that's been here knows that's the fact. And then also support the show. We have a great uh, community here, Patreon community that supports us. And I can't tell you how important that is. In fact, we want to say to the patrons, if you support our show, think about supporting us for the summit. We have these national groups coming from all over. We really need that extra support and we appreciate it. And maybe you want to be a, a summit badass or a fearless supporter or a friend of the summit. And we'll put that link in there. And I would love to see us um, do some great sponsorship today from this particular audience. So yes, um, we have an audio version on Spotify and we also on, uh, we have Spotify and the Apple podcast. So we hope you can listen in some days when you can't see us visually, you can listen. And there are 32 days until June 18th, uh, for June, June 18th, our primary in Virginia, 32 days. And there are 172 days until election day. And guess what? No one is going to save us it is up to us. So let's get stuff started and bring up Coastal Carrie for some power chat. Hey, Carrie. Hello. 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 It's hello. nice to see you from Coastal Virginia. Hello, everybody. Yeah, that was a lot of earful of women's summit, but I'm pretty darn excited about that. When you think about for the grassroots and COVID coalition and what we're talking about today right. with the grassroots. What's your thoughts right. on our guests? I mean, speaking from the outpost, right? I mean, a lot of us are coming in from other places. We're not up in Northern Virginia. We're not, you know, we're not access to um, all of the resources up there. We're not with you guys all the time. I'm, an, you know, I'm an affiliate way down here, but I mean, yeah. going to the, going to the summit was transformative for me. I've been to two of them. Um, mm -hmm. And it's been so great to actually connect with the people and, 
you know, we talk about us being campaigners, right? I mean, right. we are really trying to get better. And, and whenever we learn, the more we learn, then the more that we're more effective with our folks, with our volunteers or ourselves as activists. And I just think it's great today, the whole show sort of talking about what it's like to be in a campaign and um, what the campaign plan is and just connecting it all with like all the resources. I feel like I just, I get better when I, I go to the summit. I learn so much. I meet so many people. It's kind of like a pep rally and a convention. It's fun. And I just learn so much. I just feel like I'm, I'm more effective. No, and I, and I agree. Yeah. And, you know, part of our work, and I know over these eight years and everybody in the room understand this, we, we like to, you know, we complain, we have a, we have a couple complaints and our biggest complaint sometimes is that coordinating with the powers that be, you know, we, we're not decision makers. It's sometime these high level decisions. We're maybe not at the table, not in the room. And, and we always think that there, you know, there's a really great power for us working together so I get really excited when we do, we've made progress in Virginia. That's why Tanya and Ty are here. Eight yeah. years of working in this space and that respect and trust and, you know, that you're there, you have somebody's back, they call you, they need you, you're volunteering, they see your sweat, they know what you're doing. I mean, that doesn't happen overnight. It is about No, absolutely. Right? No. And I think we've all had stories as grassroots leaders of working with the campaigns it's not always great. I mean, you know, we need access to data. We can't afford that data. We need access to resources. If it wasn't for Network Nova, I wouldn't have my email list, my capacity to send out emails. I can't afford that. So, you know, these are things the campaign should be doing for us. Give us a list. You wouldn't believe what I had to go through to get a list of new voters in Western Congressional District 2. I cannot tell you how many emails I sent to get to the right person, to feel vetted, like I don't have any credibility because I'm grassroots and I, I here I go. I don't mean to complain. Sorry. <laughs> We've all got our stories, right? Or you walk yeah. in and, and you know, you're the, you're suddenly like the high school intern. If they don't give us any credit for all the things we bring as leaders, the experience we had doing events, you know, the thing we manage right. database, we are big girls, big girls, you know, and sometimes you just, on. you just don't, yeah, you just don't feel like it, you know? So there's oh, my rant. You. There's your rant. I'll let you have it because you're Coastal carry, And uh, I think you bring that reality into the room for us because it is a real thing. And I'll say that, you know, eight years later, here we are doing the Women's Summit. And I have to say, being in this room, in this space, um, with the people that are going to be coming from across uh, the country, different leaders, will bring that kind of, you know, when we're all in the room together, it is the power relationships. And I think today when we talk about the grassroots. It's that power working together. It's so important. We talk about it, but the reality is when it really happens, now we're doing our national show. And, and I want to move this conversation to a, a the higher level of the progress we've made, right? And I'm really excited. If everybody in this room remembers, this is the Friday Power Lunch. We're a live show. We've been going now for four years. We do this every freaking Friday, seven days a week. We we're working <laughs> on making dem democracy uh, better, our Democratic Party stronger. And it's all about working together, right? <laughs> And now we have a national relationship with some awesome women and men in the in different groups and the grassroots uh, people paid attention today in our sub stack for the grassroots connector. There was an article that Robin wrote about the Women's Summit. Read it. It is all about coming to refresh and just it's so important to take that space and time for yourself. But in general, the grassroots collaborative project. We got together because of some information and complaints about us coordinating with campaigns. I mean, so we have exciting news and I'd like to bring up Susan Wagner from, from that particular group, from Markers for Democracy. She will be at the summit to talk about this brilliant big news, Susan. I'm very happy to share this news. So Carrie, you like many, 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 many grassroots leaders that we from Marcus for Democracy heard from. And over the last eight years, it became pretty clear that we were formidable, but we were invisible. And I just decided to take it on as a cause. And as I worked on the cause, I came to understand that everybody who interacted with us really respected what we did were ultimately very grateful, but yet put up all these barriers to getting to doing what we were doing. And it it seems so incongruous because we were capable, smart, doing it for free, 
Like, why wouldn't you want to just open your arms and just say, hey, free labor, here they are, and they they get it done, you know? It just never made sense to me, it really never added up. And then what I came to understand is that there's a political industrial complex where, you know, you have um, campaign managers and directors and marketers and all those people, and they make money off of this. And even if we weren't a threat, because none of us want their jobs, they perceived us as a threat. <laughs> And so they would counsel against it. They would just counsel against it. And so we were up against this very high barrier. But I was very fortunate to create, a, as Catherine was saying, a very trusting relationship with Heather Booth, who I'm sure everybody on this call knows about. And she really heard what I was saying, and as well as Simon Rosenberg. And both of them were way higher up than all of us. And we're able to be very influential in helping us literally get a seat at the table. And I am really, really proud to tell everybody on this call that the Grassroots Coalition, all of us, now have a seat at the table. Heather Booth is going to be the co Coalition's Director for Progressives and Grassroots Groups. And to be very clear, it's sort of Venn diagram-y because we, we are not all progressive groups, but there are many progressive groups who are grassroots groups. So we will be working in sort of this kind of a way. Um, and because we are all up and running, we can get things done right away because we don't just, you know, as we were saying about many campaigns, they get up, they go down, and then they got to get up again. And it's just totally ridiculous. And when we win it after November, 2024, we're going to change that. But until we get to November 2024, we are going to work cooperatively. And there is a, um, a plan in the battleground states to have what they are calling a um, grassroots, collab grassroots liaison. And mm. that will be an official position in every battleground campaign. <laughs> That's pretty big deal. That's a pretty big deal because every one of you knows how difficult it's been for you. So there's going to be a liaison there and then there'll be liaisons in the individual states. So if you're in a battleground state and would like to be part of this, mm -hmm. creating this environment, please reach out to me and I'm more than happy to speak to you about how we can connect you to the liaison in the campaign. And I have a final announcement, which is that Catherine White has joined the steering committee of the collaboration project, which is really the going to be part of the funnel for a lot of this activity. And we asked Catherine and she said yes. So she was now part of our steering committee. Start. I'm just I'm part of the bureaucracy. <laughs> no, <laughs> we're, but no, not part we of the patriarchy informal, we are such an informal bureaucracy bureaucracy yeah. doesn't even <laughs> i know i'm teasing yeah the page i'm not in the patriarchy the patriarchy um, no so, so i'm so excited so it's grassroots liaison your role and then you were this is great and i think we may be talking some gobbledygook to some new people that don't know what the grassroots collaboration project is the connector is so use the chat folks on the show to inform anybody new to get welcome into that community. If you're a leader, you can get in the directory. And this is how we're going to start to really kind of coordinate across and in different states. So we don't, we're not redundant and so on. And that we'll, you know, Susan will be able to tell us, hey, the campaign, the Biden-Harris campaign, blah, blah, blah. And we could do blah, 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 or we can do whatever. So thank you, Susan, mm -hmm. for joining us today. And also yeah. be at the summit and we're going to have a lot of fun together. Right. Thank Thanks you all for everything. For Thanks for here. representing. <laughs> yeah. And thank you awesome. all for being the inspiration because yeah. um, you really inspired me to like really fight for this. So thank you all. Well, yeah, as we say, well, I, I can't wait. And it, like with anything, it takes years to sort of firm this all up. So mm -hmm. I'm excited to get Betsy Feebach, right, Betsy, in here to talk about what women are doing for uh for Biden, Biden-Harris campaign. So welcome, Betsy. You're the founding member and the yes. state leadership of the Women for Biden-Harris and this grassroots coalition. Let's talk about, so people understand there's a lot of confusion when we talk about the Women for Biden-Harris. It's like, right. who is the women for, everybody is the Women for Biden-Harris, aren't we? So yeah. talk about your your journey on this as a founding member and sure. then kind of let people know what's right. going on. 
Yeah, there there is a, a, a remarkable storyline that, mm -hmm. that really explains it all. Thank you so much for having me, for having us, and a number of my sister leadership are on. Mm -hmm. um, Y'all have got this down to a fun art and science. And to do it all weekly, produce this, wow, um, just wow. So thank you, Robin, Susan, Catherine, Fanal, Stair, and the whole team. And a special thank you to Julie Greenberg, um, who introduced us to you from the Grassroots Collaboration Project, of which we are a member now. Um, and a special shout out to um, my Virginia and DC Women for Biden Harris sister leaders, founder Amanda Linton, Nancy Fatimi, and Monica Hutch Hutchinson. They are also Network Nova Novans. <laughs> Yes, they are, right? Yeah. So um, long story, I'll try to make it short. Yeah. In 2020, Silicon Valley corporate alum Jill Nash was knocking on doors, trudging through the snow in Iowa when all hope was lost, didn't give up. Her close friend in the struggling campaign, Denise Bauer, had founded Women for Biden in the campaign. So Jill said to Denise, let me build the digital platforms for you. We were, you know, it was the beginning of the pandemic. Oh, right. <clears throat> so 12 women in late March, 2020 convened on a Zoom um, from vastly different backgrounds, corporate, tech, media, PR, from from those worlds, Broadway, and then there was me, a clinical social worker. So I was like a deer in the headlights, but I had been recommended by Rachel Wallace from a young staffer in the, the Philly campaign headquarters. And Rachel had just come on board to work with all of us. So fast forward to November, eight months later, election day, we lived across six social media platforms in over 30 states. Our back, uh, battleground groups had um, exponentially grown or large, but some red states too, like then Kentucky and now Idaho. We had a total reach then on election day of approximately 800,000 women nice. and a few ally men. <laughs> Um, pro phone banking um, opportunities with celebrity hosts, um, hosted speaker candidates, and Dr. Jill Biden launched Women for Biden um, in the campaign in Pennsylvania and North Carolina. And our leaders there spoke, were, you know, participated in that. Then we poured all of our resources in to the Ossoff and Warnock um, runoff campaigns in Georgia. And after January 6th, we decided that, you know, after that travesty that we had to stay together. So we became the placeholder for the name Women for Biden, now plus Harris, um, digital, then now grassroots. So, we are do not work for the campaign. We right. work with the campaign. So um, I. Um, so that's yeah, that's exciting. Just yeah. to say, that's a lot of women, and I know that, like in Virginia, when we worked on campaigns, there is something to be said for moving. We did campaigns like a hundred thousand women strong, and I think, you know, in this campaign, what are you planning to do with all these? Um, Women, one is there's a great place where women could go join this. Are you planning yes. a big digital movement around this? So tell me about your plans. Great question. Great question. We've ramped up a thousand percent uh, since late 2023. We now have corporate management and executive volunteers mm. um, helping us in that effort. We have pro graphics and messaging team, Rachel Bittacoffer 
Oh, um, Rachel's coming to the summit, by the way. I know. I saw that. Yes. Amanda Renton introduced us to Rachel Bittacoffer. And Heather Booth is, is speaking on a, a national Zoom that we're hosting on um, for women's health care through the generations, you know, of course, yes. including reproductive rights. So that's June 9th. And our battleground leaders are working with the coordinated campaigns in their states. And in North Carolina, one is actually, one of our North Carolina women is one of them. So um, a red state still helping our blue states. Nice. Postcard army working with uh, Markers for Democracy um, already at work, exactly. Mm -hmm. um, and our extraordinary women are leaders in their state in local democratic parties, um, Moms Demand Action and other great adv advocacy groups. Um, awesome. So just three of our women I wanted to highlight of all of our extraordinary women. Uh, let's see Karenza Call, born and raised in Southern India, joined us uh, came to the country to attend the Kennedy School of Government and then um, joined us in 2020, became a citizen in 2022 and voted for the first time um, in, in the midterms. Rosa, Dr. Rosa Colquitt is the first woman of color to be elected um, chair of the Oregon Democratic Party, our leader there. And our Nevada leader, Donna West, formed um, Donna's Little Garage in East Las Vegas, um, a, a state hub of Get Out the Vote, visited by one Governor Gavin Newsom and Jackie Rosen for her, uh, Senator Jackie Rosen for her rallies there. Oh, yes. So, yeah, so I've included, we've included links in the chat to right. our website and our newsletter. And of note, our letters to the editor toolkit created by our um, lead, Nancy Fatimi, with Alvina McHale and Kristen Frazee, all network novens too. Yes, and, they are. Alvina yeah. is a star, no doubt. No, so they'll be doing the letters to the editor. And what I love and what I'm hearing, and I know Susan Wagner's hearing this too, and, and leaders in this group, is we see the network and the webbing. And I think when we're when she has a seat at the table, a, a great partner is the Biden Harris, women for Biden Harris, because we're looking for leaders in the state on the ground to coordinate with. And I yeah. think that this natural coordination, and I'm excited that you will be. Uh, you're an exhibitor in the networking hall and a sponsor. So thank you for that at the Women's Summit. So thank you, Betsy, for being here. And it, um, we will, we're very excited to, to have you, to be in community. And what I think it's really important is what you said, you resurrected these Facebook rooms. And what we see is like the Pantsuit Nations. And I'm saying Pantsuit Nation, I'm in four of those groups, but they kind of went dark. And so we're bringing out the Pantsuits, we're bringing out our aviators, and uh, right, our aviators for this yeah, one, and yeah. this woman for Har you know Harris, are dancing converses. Ain't no stopping us now, <laughs> right? <laughs> and it's we should never exactly. shut down this community. It's women for Biden Harris. It's just women for democracy eventually, and it's groups of women that it should be connected to that, so it doesn't sort of go like, okay, pantsuits are not working now. Hillary's moved on. Well, we need to keep moving on. So thank you so much. Biden Harris, let's keep <laughs> with a girl that knows how to dance. Tanya James, Virginia political and coalitions director of the Biden Harris campaign and her other fearless partner. And I can't wait to just really get all you women in the room. Taye Mallory, senior advisor, Virginia Biden Harris campaign as well. And uh, let's just roll. What are you guys thinking after in this room? What's our strategy to win? Come on, let's do it. What are we doing? Ain't no stopping us now. You already said it. <laughs> um, I'm so energized and excited. First of all, thank you all for um, letting us come on um, the Friday Power Lunch. Uh, my first time on, uh, but I've watched you very um, so many times. But yeah, I think ain't no stopping us now. 
I think we all recognize and we know the importance of this election uh, for this year. And with everybody's help, we will deliver Virginia uh, for Biden and Harris. Yeah, oh, I like it. Yes, Tanya, and you have a you have been in our orbit for a long time, watching your progress and running coordinated mm -hmm. campaigns. So when I saw your name come up, Tanya James, I was very, very um, excited to see that because I guess what we know, what we're thinking in this room about grassroots is, you, what did you say in the green room to me? Well, I. I can't remember what I said to you in the green room, but I can, I have been in reflection since we started. And I was thinking about a couple of things. Um, one, the success that I've had as a, uh, as a staffer on coordinated campaigns, I think this is my fourth or fifth in Virginia, um, uh, has been because our party is a big tent and I've always, made it a point and will continue to make it a point to ensure that those grassroots um, groups that align with our party here in Virginia are always have a seat at the table. I, I mean, Network Nova has been at the table with me off to every single campaign. And I was just in reflection because I know that the in 2017, when the blue wave um, came about. Uh, we could talk about the blue wave. We can talk about the those incredible uh, candidates that we sent to the General Assembly. But I think what we have to remember is that a lot of that was due in part to the work of the, the folks in the Indivisibles, in the Network mm -hmm. Novas. I know that's how I first got and started uh, is, you know, I saw a call to action from um, what was uh, Indivisible Nova, Wes. And that didn't come in through the party. I came in through the grassroots. So the grassroots mean so much to me. And it's just so powerful that, you know, even we started to see grassroots groups kind of uh, shut down because of COVID, during COVID. Uh, but network nova y'all are y'all are like marines adapt and overcome and, and we're still here kicking it live i know that in 2020 when i was the organizing director i personally um felt that we you know even though we won by by 10 points that we did miss out on that campaign feel um uh, and, and hopefully we are able to return to that so uh, mm -hmm. excited to talk about what the campaign has in store. Uh, I think, uh, I know I've been on the, on the ground for just over a month in Taiyi a little bit. So we're, we're switching gears, moving into high gear now. No, I, I can't imagine you, what your last month has been like. And so in the green room, you said exactly that. You're like, I've been always grassroots. And like you, I came in through grassroots, not the party, which is probably a strength because you don't get, the, coming in through the party, there's all this different kind of stuff you learn and maybe you're constrained by in a way. And I didn't know better. Being naive was really important. So I just started to do what I thought needed to do. So let's go back to Tai. And for people in the room, we're talking with about Virginia right now, but this is also nationally there's all states will be putting together um, a party plan that Tanya and Tai are in charge of for Virginia. And I have to say, let's give some shout out to Virginia. You guys got your act together. I think of one of the states from top to bottom with Tim Kaine. And so let's talk about that Tim Kaine coordinated arm, what your role is, how it all is going to uh, mesh together. And I think, I just think you guys really are showing leadership across. I mean, I just see it from the very beginning when Tim Kaine had his grassroots calls and then you guys are on board now. What are you thinking, Ty, when you look at this structure and from how is it going to run so we know, we know what it looks like and how we can work with you? Absolutely. But before that, let me just also um, sh shouting out um, to the grassroots and to advocacy. I, got, I cut my teeth with the NAACP before I got into politics, and then I moved on and I worked on several races since 2008. But let me just say that 
this year, more than any year, uh, we are so excited to be have this coordinated campaign on the ground together. I'm not just senior advisor to Biden Harris, but I'm senior advisor to uh, Senator Kane's campaign and to all of our House incumbents and all of our new House candidates. And being a Kane alum, it feels so great to be just back on the ground with his team again um, and making sure that we deliver Virginia. Um, I say ain't no stopping us now, but it's also let's finish the job. And the way we're going to finish the job in Virginia is by building a team of political and campaign professionals um, who know what they are doing. We had a call this morning and we talked about we are very intentional about hiring campaign staff of grownups who are uh, who have a, a tremendous skill set, who can hit the ground running, have, who have great relationships. That's key. Great relationships already, bringing them through the door with you. Um, and we can um, talk to people um, and get ready to go quickly. Uh, let's listen, we are opening offices um, left and right. We had a great office opening in Northern Virginia on last Friday with our second gentleman, um, Doug Emhoff. We're opening two offices this weekend um, in Hampton Roads, um, one in Hampton on Saturday and then one in Virginia Beach um, um, on Sunday. And we're just so excited to um, be able to bring these offices to everyone um, quickly. Um, you're going to start seeing an organizing structure um, with, with staff as they hit the ground. We have political directors that are on the, um, hit the ground. So you can talk more to that. But we're just excited to be on the ground early. Um, and to be talking to everyone um, from our Democratic committees and to our progressive partners um, across all of Virginia. Well, yeah, and you know, I I think that's great because Annandale is one that was by me last week. You're talking about. You even had a marriage at that one. There was an official. We we saw Jimmy get Jimmy Rogers marry our our lovely Eleanor. That you know we love her, and we were like, what a great way to open a campaign with the first man too being there. That was so awesome. So for us in the grassroots, you know us, we want to know the the skinny, the four one one on how we fit in, Tanya. Like we always say, we want signs when we didn't get them. And I know I'll just say that uh, that's one thing, little stuff like that I'd love to know. And and I know you're probably starting the canvassing soon and all that, but a lot of folks wanna know when they look at the Joe Biden website, there's not there's kind of a lack of issues on there. And I would like to see a little bit more of, um, of that. So people, when they go there, more information, a little richer. What does our resources look like when people are visiting that site for like, you know, language, different languages, and and how you're you're really building. You learned a lot, so we know the mistakes we've made. Let's just say, yeah. and for this campaign, there's so much room to and space now to grow. So what's going? Let us know what what we need to know. Well, these are good problems to have to have three uh, of of the top um, staff for the Biden Harris coordinated be so invested in from Virginia. Uh, the campaign, the HQ sent down a, uh, a two pager with very, because we won and we asked for very specific Virginia uh, issues and talking points so that we are able to relate because every every state of course is different and that is fine, but we have to be able to meet our voters where we are so we're, they're working on that for us, and we are sending back our our chops on it. Um, and for the grassroots, I it's it's really hard for me to 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 put a difference between the party and the grassroots because a lot of us are able to move through those uh, without without any any problems. So for me. Um, it's about continuing to build those coalitions, making sure that, you know, there, there hasn't been a campaign that I've worked on where I haven't had a sit down with, right. you know, with, with, with you and, 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 and Robin and stare and talk about the needs. I think that in 2020, or maybe it was even 2018 when, um, you know, y'all just said that we want to do these huge, huge postcard parties and send them out. And, and I was like, well, wait, let's make sure we are doing this strategically. And now it's built into a program that is effective. Yeah. And that's the type of collaboration and where we can meet each other and we'll continue to meet each other. If there are other uh, grassroots organizations that I'm not aware of, just please put me in contact with them. 
uh, throughout Virginia. Um, we we right have, I have, a, I have a regional political director who's already on the ground. I, I know y'all know her well, Lily Franklin. Oh, Lily. Uh, oh, yeah. She's our, yeah, that, she's awesome. I was so yeah, excited to have uh, her on the ground. So that's She's awesome. going to be our, our political director out there. She's working hard. We're going to be doing a, a Roanoke office opening soon. And I think we may have a surrogate out there this uh this coming this coming week to do a, a swing through rural i mean rural virginia has a seat at the table yes. and everybody's gonna this is gonna take all hands on deck all arms linked so we're going to bring everybody along and and make sure that all voices are heard we yeah. have um uh, again you know we have the two the hampton road so Right. Coastal Cary, I hope I can see you this weekend. I will be at both the, the, the Hampton office opening and the Virginia Beach office opening. I, I put my yes. my email in the chat and Tai did too. If if people want those, invite uh, RSVP links or maybe I can just send them out over to y'all and y'all can blast them out today if folks want to still try to try to come to those. Uh, in the coming weeks, we'll have Roanoke, we'll have Prince William right. County, and then we will start, we will do more hiring. Um, and then we'll come back and do another round of office right. openings and another round of hiring as we start to amplify uh, the coalition. I love yeah. it. I'm going to interrupt you because we're getting on time and I want to make sure we have Bill Rubin coming up next, a Virginia political consultant. But Tai, I want to give you the last word. And I want to say really big thank you, Tanya. And Tai, last word to this audience. And then we're just so thankful you're here just getting it started early. Thank you so much. Thank you all to everyone here for um, allowing us to come on. You're going to be seeing us a lot more all around the state. I put my email in the chat for anyone that wants to get in contact with me. Just know there is something that you need and you don't have it. You can't find it in, on the websites. Um, get, get to a member of our team and we're going to do absolutely everything we can to get you what you need um, um, on, on the ground. And let's go out there. Let's vote. Let's fight. Let's win. Yeah, let's fight. Let's win. And we're going to go on. Ain't no stopping us now. That's right. I'm on camera. You're on camera and you're dancing. Uh, spark, I'm right? on camera. I'm sorry. About that. <laughs> you know how I love to dance. Yeah, we do. I'm doing the happy dance because they're because they're focusing on the grassroots. It's making me happy. No, oh, I'm making so me excited happy. too. And I and I have to say that uh, this next segment, I love talking about us. I just want to talk, let's talk about us all day. Let's talk about <laughs> How great we, we know when we got there and do this, I love that you're bringing Joel Rubin on to talk about, the, you know, us viewing ourselves as candidates or how, you know, you can set this up. I just love the idea that we really can see ourselves as surrogates and how maybe we can learn some pointers from him. Let's, let's get that conversation going. I love it. Absolutely. So I'm excited to welcome Joel Rubin. Um, he is a communication strategist. He runs Rubin Communications and he ran basically the local version of Meet the Press for a really long time. Um, but he also covered politics um, throughout Virginia. And so he's really knowledgeable. He's worked with a bunch of candidates before. Um, so Joel Rubin, welcome to the Friday Power Lunch. Thanks for being here. Uh, Carrie, thank you. I mean, uh, am I the only guy among 150, 156 no. women? Oh no, we have plenty I of want folks. To think like um, I am. <laughs> we've got some regulars, we've got some Patreons, we've got great, lots of great guys out there. So you are That's not great. alone. I, we I'm want honored. you to feel welcome. Well, I'm honored to be, and I told you this, Carrie, when we talked earlier, that I believe what happened the day after the inauguration in 2016 was the most important political event of maybe of my lifetime. I mean, what, what women was, did to march, yeah. but not just that, and to get active when they came home, um, to you know, run for office or get involved in campaigns. Um, you know, I think I told you in one of the legislative elections we had here, maybe it was in 17 or 19, I can't remember which one, we housed a couple of women from San Francisco yeah, we did. came in here to you know, help um, walk the streets and make phone calls, et cetera, for our legislative candidates, because they knew that it didn't matter. Democrats ran California, but they knew how pivotal the election was here 
yeah. in Virginia. And that kind of enthusiasm is so important. And it's exactly what I'll tell your, your crowd today is if this, if, if Biden Harris can win this election, it's going to be up to women. Yeah. Bottom Agreed. Line. And so it, it we want to be, men. yes. And I want to, I just want to bring up the effectiveness quotient because I know we have the enthusiasm quotient, right? But I want to know, you know, it's perfect that you're here today because we're talking to the campaign. But as we mentioned before, you know, Catherine mentioned this at the opening, as grassroots activists, we really feel like we're campaigning too. You know, we're out there. I'm, you know, I'm out there going to meetings where I'm kissing babies and shaking hands, right? But I'm recruiting volunteers. So, and I'm not asking for votes for myself. I'm putting myself out there as an organizer and trying to get people to come along with my movement. So, you know, you've worked with candidates before. Can We wanna know some tactical tips, right? So tell us some advice. I know that you worked with um, a lot of candidates, most notably Aaron Rouse, who just dropped a video yesterday, which we've all, mm -hmm. a lot of us have seen. Okay. And I know you were involved with him in the early days. Tell us about the advice you gave him when he got started. The advice I gave Aaron Rouse was tell your story. Okay. You know, he was sort of known down here in Virginia beach um, as a football player. I mean, he, had, he had been a played at first colonial high school in Virginia beach and then at Virginia tech. And then he, you know, went to the, the pros for, you know, a couple of years, but he grew up poor, worked really hard um, and got to the top of his, you know, profession being the national uh, football league. And, you know, he came, he wrote, ran for city council, which sort of stunned me because he had not been involved in politics or on any commissions or the school board or planning commission, all that stuff before he did this. So I said, tell your story. And in fact, I, I produced the first video for Aaron Rouse back, <laughs> back then during his campaign. And he was running for what was called an at-large seat against an incumbent and a very well funded um, candidate from the business community. And uh, he ended up coming in and it was three people running for two seats and he ended up coming in first and, yeah. and, um, and sort of, you know, stunned a lot of people and he has only grown in stature. You know, now he's in the state uh, Senate and I was just at an event recently there. Aaron was on a panel. I was very impressed with uh, how well he has engaged issues and become a leader uh, in the state yes. Senate among the delegation here. So, um, so, um, so yeah. looking at that, you know, not no. to interrupt, but we, you know, I want to get to some real good tactics for our folks. Right. But so if personality is the most persuasive piece, right. And certainly yeah. with Aaron Rouse is very mm -hmm. persuasive. What do I do to attract people to my cause? Like my grassroots organization. Okay, How well, can Carrie, I, I think that? the important thing is you got to see yourself as Aaron Rouse or your candidate. <laughs> I mean, if you are selling Aaron Rouse, you're really selling yourself because I, I have supported candidates, like for instance, in primaries, and I'm sure everybody's the same way, where you got two or three, four, five, six Democrats running for an office. You go, which one do I support? We got it going on right now. We have a congressional uh, race down here in the second district between, I think just two Democrats running for this, this seat. And I'm inclined to support the one I know, okay? I don't have time to go out and meet everybody and study all their issues and, you know, and this kind of thing. Um, right. So you're more likely to, so if Carrie Short comes up to me and says, as a, you know, uninformed, great unwashed voter out there and says, I really like so-and-so um, and you're somewhat persuasive and they respect you. Okay. Then they're likely to support this, this candidate. They're not going to take all mm -hmm. the time to go do this. And you can say it's an uninformed way yeah. to do this, but that is reality is that, you know, you're going to go to a restaurant that somebody recommends to you, right? Because you recommend it and I trust your taste. And so that's mm -hmm. the same thing. You are selling so yourself. So you're kind of, yeah. right? Go ahead. So you're kind of saying that it's not, I mean, I know I get sometimes anxious that people are going to ask me a lot of questions. I'm not going to know everything there is to know about these issues. Because we always say issues are important. Issues are important. And obviously I want to know. But what do I do about the fact that I don't, I'm not an expert at everything? Well, most people aren't drilling down that deeply. I mean, sometimes it comes down to where is he on abortion? You know, where is he on maybe some issue that's high profile right now? I mean, like, you know, the war in Gaza or something like that. Mm -hmm. I mean, whatever's on them. Or, and you can ask that. What's important to you? Okay, what's important to you? Because you want to take this information back to the candidate because you're representing this candidate. I talked to Sally so-and-so and, -so and 
And she really wants to know where you are on this. And um, you know, some things you can bone up on and, and know, you know, from what he or she is putting out there on their website or what you've heard him say on the stump. This is where he is on this. Um, mm -hmm. Some things you can't satisfy them, right? I mean, if they're pro-choice right. versus pro-life or something like that, you know, I, I can't handle hand you. But, but if, if that's an issue that's important, that may be all they care about, really. Some people mm -hmm. are one-issue voters, not just one-issue candidates. So when you feel like you're trying to get a read on someone, right? How do you know when there's an opening? I, I think you have to listen. I mean, listening is very, very important. What is important to you? Okay. I mean, I can tell you what's important to Joe Biden or that sort of thing. Um, but I think, for instance, in this race we're dealing with right now, this presidential race, I mean, there's a, I hate to say this, there's a pall over this ticket, this Democratic ticket. You know, he's old, he's this, he's that. And, you know, Trump is exciting or whatever, is as crooked and everything as he is. And I, I think you guys have to figure out what is it that really is going to appeal to people. You've got to talk up for this. Joe Biden has done a hell of a job the last four years. We need four more years of him, not just we don't need four years of Donald Trump. OK, mm -hmm. because, you know, as, as I'm reading these polls and everything, I mean, there are people that voted for biden in 2020 that aren't voting for him in 24 i mean it's stunning to me stunning yes, yes. So, well we are you know yeah. we're you we have to take control of that narrative mm -hmm. and it's it's a little anxiety producing for you know for people um and we have to take that narrative and it takes like certain skills to be able to do that i mean are there top skills that you would tell a candidate like you and i talked about working the room and I had I had heard someone say about a candidate down here, he really doesn't know how to work the room. I mean, no. how do you develop something like that? Well, you know, it helps whether you are the surrogate, so to speak, or out there doing it or the candidate to be, and I, I'm going to use this word, curious, okay? You want to know about them, okay? Tell me about yourself. People love to talk about themselves. Tell me about yourself, not just, oh, yeah, I see you're here shopping at so-and-so, okay? Uh, how long have you lived in Fairfax County, right? How many kids do you have in school or something, you know, something that mm -hmm. gets them mm -hmm. talking about uh, themselves. And and then you, you're you going to find something that you guys, you know, have in common. And you've built, built a rapport, okay? Right. And so it's building that, hey, I really liked it. Carrie was actually interested in me. Nobody ever asked me about yeah. myself. And so I yeah. think they're more willing than to open up a bit when hey, they know is, that um, you're curious about them. Kavalkovic? You know, we did mention when we talked earlier mm -hmm. um, about, you know, can't people saying, I've never had a candidate come to my porch before. And when you know doggone well that there have been candidates coming to their porches before. Sometimes they just or, leave, a, know, leave a flyer at the door because you're not home. Right, but, right, right, right. So I was kind of thinking about, you know, connecting back to the grassroots. So when I am out there asking people, my ask is not, vote for me. Right. Right. My ask is come with me, join me. Let's, you know, let's do this together. My, their currency is the vote. My currency is time and trust. When mm -hmm. I get a volunteer on the hook, so to speak, right. when I get a volunteer and they're committed to doing something with me, I am not going to waste their time. Right. And they're going to trust that I'm going to put them to work at something that's meaningful. And of right. course, we always try to make it a little fun. But is that, as an activist, I feel like my that's my currency. That's that's the only thing I have to offer. Right. They they want to know what you're doing. It's like when you contribute to an organization or something. Well, are you contributing? Why should I? Okay. At the same time, so you're giving your time. Here's what I enjoy doing. I've I've been on the phone with you know a hundred people in the last four weeks or three weeks or something like that. And what I'm learning across this district uh, is is amazing. So you'll really enjoy getting on the phone and talking to people. It's not a burden. Um, or if it's just coming in and sending out, you know, uh, licking envelopes or whatever it is. Right. Uh, it's meaningful. And you're going to, you know, I feel like I'm really part of the process in this country right now because this is a really important issue, a really important election. And I'm part of it. I'm don't. And I think you want to be part of the solution, too. Right. Yeah. Don't you? Yeah. Well, I, I think I want to bring it just to kind of close up, you know, kind of echoing what Tyree offered, which is it is at the end of the day about relationships. Yep. Why is that so hard? Why is it so hard? 
because some, a lot of people are, are introverted and, and they just aren't good at it. I mean, there are some people that are just, you know, love being, I love being out there. I'm an extroverted guy, but a lot of people, it's like, they're very guarded about themselves and just have never learned the skills. And so yeah. but those people lick the envelopes. Those aren't the people that exactly. are out there. Exactly. There the is a place, says, right? There's a role for yeah. everybody. Yeah, there is a role for everyone. You can bring cookies to the campaign office or, you know, text bank if you're And it's if all you're important. But I can't yeah, thank do you. you do, Carrie. I just don't know the issues very well. And I just don't relate to people very well. That's okay. We've got a million jobs, you know, for people because th this is so important that we win this election. You had me. Thank you. Well, thanks for saying there's room for everyone because that's what we're always saying. You know, we're always saying like, there's room, we, all talents are welcome. There's room for everyone. So thank you for that. Thanks a lot. And thanks for being here today. It's really great listening to you and, and this advice um, that can translate to us, you know, that we can be these surrogates and, and, and consider ourselves out there. And we talk about this in the show all the time that we're the messengers. It's just powerful. So any last words, yeah. Joel, and then we will wrap up. You're welcome to stay to the after chat with us. Uh, I'll, I'll I'll stick around. I, I just really believe it's up to you, ladies. I, I hate to say it. I mean, the men are too many men are like like <laughs> Trump or whatever it is. And I understand. I mean, women think about a whole lot more issues, and you know, it kills me. Like everybody talks about inflation as being the worst. I see people out all the time. Restaurants are full and all this stuff. So I mean, the economy is not dying here, even though they want you to believe it is. And so, um, you're you know, right. Maybe it's point those things out to people. Yeah, it's a messaging on that. I was reading one of our members today sent some information they, that Don Beyer and Jerry Connolly are messaging really well on inflation, meaning that back in the day, you're trying to remind, remind people, like you said, people think Trump did a better job, that what it was like under Trump during COVID, how he mismanaged, how the economy fell apart, and it was Biden who brought the economy back. And that Just like Obama did. Yes. <laughs> so thank you for being here. And, and and so we appreciate you staying in. So thank you for everybody listening. Joel Rubin. Uh, I don't know if Joel has a page that people follow him on on Twitter or anything. He has a smart guy with probably a lot of good advice. Um, if so, Joel, put that in the chat where people can uh, find out more about you. So thank you for being here. So we have a few minutes to wrap up and, you know, we didn't get a chance to gossip. No, I don't mean gossip. I mean, <laughs> water, cooler, water cooler talk or just yeah. what's going on because the grassroots, we feel the energy or sort of the, the mood. And we know that right now, I mean, let's talk about some news that's on our mind in the grassroots community. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I mean, Joel mentioned the polling data that came out. Um, you know, I'm trying to, I'm, channeling my inner Simon, Simon Rosenberg on that one. Uh, you know, the, the polar coaster, as um, Robin mentioned to me this morning while we were texting about today's show. It's just, it is something, you know, you want to keep an eye on, but you don't want to, you don't want to get too invested in those polls. But it is the talk of the town when they come out. And I think that that, again, is the messaging. So um, I think um, Heidi's going to drop some information in the chat about the, about the um, video that he did this week about the poll. And that in the room, I was there for the poll talk. You know, we like we, the only poll that we should have is a dancing poll, just so you know. Right. But the uh, that what, what Tom Bonner was able to do, and he's the CEO of Target Smart, was to unpack a poll and show what's a good poll look like. How was this poll done? And he really took a step by step to show, like, look, he'll say, as a person that does this, I pay attention when I see this and that but there's only so many people that were interviewed. They contacted in this way. There was only 10 people that actually answered it. But when they, when the New York times puts it out, you know, they just say the headline yeah, uh, and right. then everybody goes, Oh, we're going to. Right. Know, and, and so many people are right. getting their news on their phone that they're not yeah. going to see much beyond the first 12 words. Right. So they see that. And then, but luckily I think as we're out there, you know, we, we come to the Friday power lunch and we do the summit and all of that because we're learning how to talk about this stuff. And then people know to ask us about it, right? So that, that's why these communication skills and reframing and all the websites that are out there to help us do that, so important. Yeah, and, and like Jill said, you know, we talk about it's up to us. It is a heavy thing to say. And I think, you know, I know Julia Greenberg is really big on the program they're starting. It's called Man Up because trying to get men more involved, maybe they, they are doing something else and we just need to find out where that is and how we can coordinate. 
or bring more diverse people into this coalition to get them working. But it, it is feel like a lot sometimes. So yeah. I want to talk endorsements real quick. I know the talk of the town on CD7 in Virginia, CD10, we have like 12 people in 10, so eight people in seven, and then these endorsements start. And it really starts divisive feelings in, within our coalition, right? Mm -hmm. Like Right. I mean, you hear feeling. people. Yeah. You know, it's hard when they say, you don't know what to say when someone says, well, um, you know, I don't want to, I don't want to pick my replacement, you know, or, you know, or they just kind of, people kind of weasel out like, uh, you know, I'm for democracy. I want everyone to, I want everyone to run, you know, it's not helpful. And then, so these endorsements are, are sticky, sticky, sticky. And, you know, in CD2, Missy came out with a ton of endorsements. She's got a, she's been at this for a year. She's got a ton of fantastic endorsements. And then now she's got to face a primary after all that work to get these endorsements. I mean, well, it, it's, it, and, I, and it's not as much of a, I don't think it's as much of a crap show as it is up there in seven and 10, but yeah. Hmm. And I don't know, I don't know the, all the inside baseball about all of those endorsements, but you know, as far as those other, those other districts, right. um, but I've been listening to the news about them and, and it sways a lot of people. It, it does. And, and I think for us, and this is what I would say to people in the grassroots, and there's stuff we can control and stuff we can't control, right? Um, and those are the things, some of that we can't control. So I always say, let's stay, let, let's work on what we can do. Let's focus on the work we can get done. A lot of this stuff with the polling and some stuff that's going on, it, it gets becomes a distraction. And we know what our superpower is to get busy after June 18th and make sure that we do win. So with that, I want to thank uh, Melody Cartwright is our newest patron. Let's give a big shout out, big uh, happy uh, thank you, thank you for supporting our work. For those that love what they see here, being a patron really helps us do the work every week. And we find when we go out to ask sponsorship, let me just whine for one second. People forget, like they'll be like, oh, I donated, we sponsored you last year, but not this year. Look, we need consistency. We're persistent. We do this every week. We show up. And when you sort of say, oh, like, I don't mean you in this room. I mean, some of our elected, some of these people out there will be like, eh. they forget how important we are until we're not here anymore. So I would say to you, to folks in the room, let send out our sponsorship thing. If you have a delegate or senator, make sure you ask them, are you sponsoring the Women's Summit? Because this is how we have people coming and we want to make sure that we have a great uh, program for them. And we need that extra gap because our tickets right. are really inexpensive. So I'm shouting right. out first for that. And um, next week, primary, we're going to have a big primary show Friday, May 24th. This will be exciting. Everybody that is not afraid to show up on our show. We will have a primary yeah. show. <laughs> you know, right, Carrie? I'm looking forward to that. That's going to be. And, who's going to show up? I, well, we you know we don't like to do, you, you know, we don't do ringers. Like we don't, you we're know, not we're not going to ambush people. Right. No. Right. We're positive. We're not, oh, I, okay. No, I'm sorry. No, I'm teasing. <laughs> Uh, we are very excited to support our people because we have actually good people in all the seats. So I want to thank everybody that came on the show and, and our guest today. I mean, uh, this was a show about the grassroots. Congratulations to uh, Susan Wagner for getting that grassroots liaison show. Thank you to Betsy Feebach, a founding member of States Leadership and Women for Biden, the Grassroots Coalition, and all the people that she named. You know who you are. You know what you're doing. Keep doing it and just keep moving on. And don't stop. And also Tanya James, she's here, Virginia Political Co Coalition's director. Thank you. Thank you. And Taiyi Mallory, senior advisor, and Joel Rubin. What a pleasure to have him on the show with a bunch of women. He made it through the conversation. Joel, you're great. So show business. We'll see you on the other side. See you on the after chat. Thank you to the team today. We couldn't do this without all of our team members. And uh, thank you. And just follow us on social media. See you on the other side.